Hey guys, welcome to WPF Tutorials. Today we are going to be talking about the canvas in WPF. The canvas is simply a stripped down panel that doesn't have to deal with any of the measuring and arranging logic that the other layout containers like the dock panel, wrap panel, grid, and stack panel have to worry about. It allows the developer, which is us, to place all of the elements on the canvas using exact coordinates. So this actually makes for a lightweight zippy panel. It's still not recommended to use this to create layouts that need flexibility. Um, but more like if you wanted to create some sort of a drawing application or something simple like that. Um, so how do we use it? Well, the canvas is actually really, really easy to use. All we have to do is place our elements in the canvas tag and then use the canvas.bottom, left, top, or right attached properties to say where you want the element to go. So in this instance, I'm going to show you, okay, so we have a red ellipse. The height and the width of the ellipse are each 100. Um, let's make things a little more interesting. If we have a blue circle, notice how canvas.top and canvas.left are pushing that circle 25 units from the top and 25 units from the left. So that's how you position elements using the canvas. So another cool thing about the canvas is that we can actually place it in a layout. So let's see here. How are we going to do this? We have our canvas. Um, here are three circles and a canvas. And let's go ahead and give it some boundaries by giving it a height of 100, let's say. And we have a stack panel here with two buttons. And what we can do is we can actually put the canvas into the stack panel between the buttons. So notice how one of the circles, the bottom circle, the blue one, is underlapping the button. Well, there's actually an attribute on the canvas itself um, called clip to bounds. And we're actually going to set that to true so it will clip off everything that tries to get outside of the bounds of the canvas. And so notice how there's no more blue underlapping there. And let me make this a little bit clearer by removing this button. Just to show that the circle isn't hiding under there either. So there's one last cool thing I want to talk about, and that is actually the Z index. For those of you who don't know what the Z index is, it's simple. Basically, the higher the Z index is, the closer it's going to be to the topmost layer, or to us, if we look, think of it in three-dimensional terms. So you can see here the circles in the canvas are actually overlapping each other. And you may be thinking to yourself, I don't remember him specifying a z-index. Well, that's because I didn't. The canvas did it for me when I placed the elements inside of it. If no z-index is specified, the elements automatically get a z-index in the order they are placed into the canvas. And that's called the z-order. We can change this order by simply rearranging the elements or actually setting the z-index on the circles themselves. So let's play around with that a little bit. Right now, the blue circle has a z-index of 0. So if we remove that and make that the last element in the canvas, it's going to be given a z-index of 3 and therefore be moved to the top. And we can move, let's say let's move the red circle into the middle and you can see it's in the middle now. Now I actually have some code that I already wrote that handles the click event on each circle so that when the circle is clicked it will rise to the top layer and the others will drop down. So let's check that out. Let's just go ahead and bring this canvas out. Okay, so what I did here was I just brought the canvas out of the stack panel back into the main the main window, and we need to name our canvas canvas one. So 
So what this code is doing is it's actually handling the mouse down event on each circle and if it's not already at the top it will move it to the top and if it's not already at the bottom it will move it down one level or one index. So I'm just going to hit play and I'm going to I just click the blue circle and it moved it to the top. Click the green one, the blue one, red, green, blue, green, red, green, red. Pretty cool, huh? So there's a lot of fun things you can do with the Z-Index on the canvas. So that is it for today, guys. Um, today, I hope you understand how to set up the canvas and what it's used for. There's a lot of creative things you can do with it. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, or anything I can do to improve, please let me know and just leave comments below the video. Thank you and see you next time.